This video is part of a series of videos going through the setup of multiple Sentinel options and settings in your environment. Make sure you look at the description to find the other videos. Now let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in Sentinel. And before we move on, just a reminder, if you do like this sort of content, subscribe and like the video. And dislike if you don't like and let me know in the comment section why that is. Cool, so let's dive in into watch lists and Sentinel. All right, so first things first, we're in Sentinel. Let's find the watch list section. The watch lists is under configuration. So you can see the watch list option here at the bottom left corner. Let's go ahead and click on it. Before we just configure watch lists, let's understand what they are. They are essentially lists in your Sentinel environment that you may want to perform allow listing or block listing based on different criteria. And with that, you can ensure that you are performing the right hunting query for that particular set of users or entities or devices and so on and so forth. All right, so it's a list of items that you might need to whitelist or block list, to allow list or block list. And the use cases, they vary, right? So there are a few examples here, but you can import business data according to users, for example. So think of users that you might want to always allow and not block them from uh, specific information and not see incidents from them for atypical travel, for example, because you know that those users, they are generally traveling. So they are VIP and they have a very high range of movement in the world. So you don't want to get incidents for them because they are traveling, for example. So you create a list of all th those users and you add that to your analytics rules in order not to be notified of them, uh, of results that match that criteria. At the same time, you might also have another list that look at a list of employees who should be prohibited from accessing specific information. And then it, you can create an analytics rule that whenever you have a match for that particular user, you raise a, a higher severity incident, for example. Um, so these are a couple examples, but there are much more, right? Now let's go ahead and create a watch list. First things first, we, hit, we just need to create an, a new watch list here. The watch lists have watch lists have a name, they have aliases as well. Let me go ahead and fill in this information. So in this scenario, I'm creating a watch list for IP addresses that are known to be IP addresses coming from uh, red teamers that are performing specific pen tests against my environment. So imagine you're a SOC analyst and you're a security engineer who have been told by your SOC manager that you have this list of IP addresses that you should not be investigating against because the business know that these IP addresses are being legitimately used by pen testers to find uh, vulnerabilities or find issues in your environment. So you don't want to, to have alerts created whenever these IP addresses have matches in, in your environment. So you need to create a watch list to use it as an allow list for these IP addresses. So this is what this watch list is for. Let's go ahead and click on source. So we can use files as sources for watch lists, for example. These files can be on local file or they can be on Azure storage. In my example, I'm going to upload a CSV file containing IP addresses. What IP addresses are these? If you're following along the uh, free lab guide, we have a list of IP addresses available to us here. So these are IP addresses that I need to upload there. Let me go ahead and download this as a CSV. When I click on download here, I just get the CSV file in my device. I can go ahead and upload this file. There you go. So I can see the IP addresses here from the CSV file, and then I can add a search key. So the search key is used to op optimize the query performance when using this watch list for join with other data. As an example, you can enable a column with IP addresses to be designated a search key field, and then use this field to join in other event tables by IP address. There we go. With all, all these done and set up, let's review and create. A few seconds are gonna go by and the watch list items are is gonna be filled in and populated soon. As you can see, there's still there's zero rows still here. 
let's just wait a few more seconds for it to populate okay so after a few minutes we get to see here the watch list and the watch lit list items that have been discovered by the platform from what i uploaded so what i can see now in leverage is this watch list in different parts of the platform like i said before if i click on deal in logs i get to see how i can consume this in my environment so remember i uh, attempted using get watch list before uh, with a different watch list that would have been created by my team there we go so now i get to use this get watch list um, capability in my queries and then i use the watch list name that i just created and i get all the results from the csv file that i uploaded all right so it's pretty straightforward so you just have an IP address for the field that I entered, the search key as well, part of it. And so we can use these results in part of queries and complex queries later on in the future. For example, let's consume this watch list in an analytics rule. Okay, so let me close down this log section. Let me go ahead to analytics now. So what I want to do now is find the analytics rule that I need to modify. So the analytics rule that I'm looking for reports on the high count of AP addresses um, by one on many ports. So I know it's not in my active rules. Previously, it would be under rule templates, but analytics rules have moved out from there to Content Hub when I don't have data sources installed for it. So let me go ahead and find that high count port analytics rule under Content Hub. There we go. So I have a few matches here for this particular name, high count. And the particular analytical that I'm looking for is high count of connections by client IP on many ports. Let me go ahead and install this. There we go. After a few seconds, it's set up or installed. Now I get to click on configuration. Now let me, let me go ahead and create, go through the configuration of this particular analytic rule. Let me go ahead and click on create rule. Now, what I want to ensure I'm doing is when I'm creating this particular rule, I'll allow listing that set of IP addresses that I created from the watch list. So all I need to go into rule logic. And what I need to do is ensure that I'm adding a couple statements. First and foremost is to bring up the IP address field from my watch list. So under let here, I need to add this statement. And then I also need to add a second statement at the bottom of this, the bottom of this query. So right here, after where I need to add this other statement. So I just need to fix something here. Delete this other, the last statement there, and the query is valid. And then go ahead and reveal and create. So there we go. I the analytics rule validation passed, and now I'm saving this analytics rule. So with that said and done, I now enable the analytics rule that consumes my watch list, and that takes that list into consideration when it's creating it. So hopefully you found this video informative. We have gone through the setup of watch list and the inclusion of that watch list into an analytics rule. If you find this video informative, Make sure you subscribe and like the video. And if you're keen for more videos on the series, make sure you head, head into the description to find the playlist with all the videos of this, this uh, series. Thank you.